recently I traveled from Europe to India and there's no question that traveling during pandemic is a lot of additional paperwork and stress. But if you go systematic, step by step, that is not all that complicated. From the document requirement to the online registrations to the online embassy registrations, the rules pertaining to the RT-PCR test, the immigration, boarding, deporting, and my learning points from the recent travel. In this video, I'm gonna share it all. And by the end of it, you will know what to expect during this kind of travel, and also most importantly, how to prepare for this kind of travel during the pandemic. Let's go. The one day Bharat air bubble flight that I took was from Germany to France and France to India. Besides booking the flight itself and getting your visa thing sorted, one of the first most important travel documents that you need to obtain is the RT-PCR test report. I would say there are three important things to be kept in mind about the RT-PCR test report. One, that it should be in English. Two, that it should have some kind of document number written on it so that it can be linked to you. And three, that the date and time mentioned on the report should be proper. So in my case, I was getting the report uh, in Germany. By default, in Germany, you get it in German, but I paid 10 euros extra and then I could get it in English. And the report had my passport number on it. So with the passport number, they can link it that, yeah, it's passport number, it's me. And then the third is that the date and time, you know, like, as I said, it's, it's a person who's filling out this report after the report is generated. So uh, they, they can make a mistake. And then um, we usually are so focused on seeing the negative written on the report that we tend to oversee this. So also check when you get your report, definitely check that the date and time, etc., is matching to what it is actually. Once you have received the RT-PCR test report, then basically all the other online jobs can start. The first of which is to register yourself on the Air Suvida website. It's a self-declaration form that you need to fill out. I'll put this link in description so that it's easier for you to find this form. Basically, it's a very straightforward form. All you need to do is fill out the details, which are like your name, your passport number, address at the destination, email address, countries visited in the last 14 days, any health symptoms and so on. And also it asks you some of the details regarding your flight. For example, your seat number, your uh, your flight number, etc. It's very straightforward, but it also asks you for a phone number, you know, the Indian phone number. I found that there's no actual need for this. So you can actually put any of your family members or any friend's phone number. There's no OTP as such, so there's no need for this number to be working, but it has to be an Indian phone number. The RT-PCR test report also needs to be uploaded in the Air Suvida self-declaration. Without this, you cannot submit the form. Once you have filled out the form and submitted, the email which you have entered during the filling of the form itself is the place where a e-copy for this form is sent out to you. Right? So definitely make sure the email address is correct as well. I did not find anywhere where it's written that you need to carry a hand, uh, like, you know, hand carry a printout of this form, but I was carrying it and I also found it was very convenient. You know, it was asked at so many places and it was so much more convenient just to hand over this printout instead of handing over your phone to different people each time. So that's why I carried a printout, but it's up to you what you want to do. There's no rule. And of course, the online um, PDF copy, et cetera, e-copy on your phone, et cetera, is absolutely acceptable. Next, you need to register at the Indian Embassy website at the departing country. So in my case, traveling from Germany to France and France to India, the departing country becomes France because that is exactly the place from where I'm leaving the EU. So. Again, straightforward uh, form on the website with some general questions about your name, passport number, flight information, the destination address, and of course your reason for travel. This is another one of these forms, which was the requirement was only to have it on e-copy, e but I was also carrying it as a printout. So now with the RT-PCR test report in hand, the self-declaration done on the Air Soveda website, as well as the registration done on the embassy website on the departing country. Now all these things are taken care of, so now we are actually ready for travel. Remember that the mask that you need to wear, it should be a surgical mask. So it should not be one of these homemade cotton masks or any of these, uh, you know, like designer masks. It has to be a surgical mask and you will be fined if you're not wearing this. It was an early morning flight in my case. The airports are quite empty because of the limited flights and passengers. But due to the COVID precautions, the check-in may actually take a lot of time. So, 
try to be at the airport well in time to avoid any unnecessary last minute panic. In my case, a very thorough check was performed for the documents at the time of checking in in Germany. The guy checked my RT-PCR test report, cross-matched with the passport details and the time mentioned, time and date mentioned on the RT-PCR test report. He checked the air suvidha, checked that the details there were matching my passport and after after doing this, then he had a uh, he had a computer on his uh, desk. He went through the rules, regulations, etc. for almost 10 minutes just to see if some new rule has come about in the last few hours. While he was checking, I was just wondering that, you know, what if there is a new rule which has come now in the last few hours? I mean, what can I possibly do about it? But anyway, it was, uh, it went smooth. I got the boarding pass. And then after that, uh, the next step was security. Security is the usual. They'll ask you to unpack everything, take out all electronics, etc., and then pack it back again. So no, nothing changed there, but of course, everything was being organized in a very smooth way, social distancing norms being followed and so on. The boarding happens as per zones and the zone number is mentioned on the boarding pass. It's quite usual, right? The only difference now during pandemic is that it is really strictly enforced. And I found that the entire process was very smoothly done and everyone's wearing a mask and also social distancing norms were being followed. So no, nothing to worry about that. Uh, since all the documents had already been checked at the check-in, right now during uh, boarding at the boarding gate area, the only thing which was checked again is the boarding pass. The flight was not so full, which was such a bonus. The immigration check at Paris airport went very smoothly as well. The guy only checked my passport and no other documents, no PCR test, no self-declaration, nothing. Just the passport and that was it. Once the immigration check was done, I proceeded towards this uh, boarding gate waiting area. When I reached there, I saw so many people sitting around and waiting and I was like, oh my God, this flight's gonna be so full. But anyway, it's just the way it is. At the time of boarding, uh, the guy checked the RT-PCR test report, the air suvidha self-declaration. Um, yeah, I had the Arogi Setu app on my phone all the time, but no one checked it. Not in Germany, not in France, and definitely not in India. And also the registration which was uh, required to be done on the Indian embassy website in France. I was also having that, but that was not checked. But anyway, it's better to do it than to not do it, yes? After boarding the plane, I realized that this is a much bigger plane than the first one and also it's not going to be as full as I originally thought. So that was a pleasant surprise. Another thing, you know the rules and regulations which are applicable right now during travel along with the supporting documents that need to be furnished, they're all changing. They're changing on a day-to-day -day basis and depending on the country that you need to visit. What was really relieving for me to know is that these airport officials were so helpful and also in case you forget to fill out a form or, or just by chance that you didn't know that it existed and then you had to fill it out, don't worry. When you're at the airport, these guys, they keep announcing on the PA like this. And then they tell you, you know, that, okay, if this, this form is there, if you don't have it filled out already, approach us on the front desk and then we're gonna help you out filling it. Another thing is that these all, all these airports have free Wi-Fi. So, you know, it is very convenient to just fill out these forms, even if there was one which you didn't know existed. You can also fill it right at the boarding gate waiting area. And there's no problem. The only problem is if, you have, if your RT-PCR test report is not in order. I mean, there are rules depending on country to country. It could be 48 hours, 72 hours, etc. You know, like in my case. And it's also very important to know what exactly is the countdown. When does the countdown begin for this 48 hours? And what is the deadline? When is 72 hours? I'll tell you my example. In Germany, from 30th March onwards, they have a new guideline for travel in which it's not 72 hours anymore. It's now 48 hours. So when does 48 hours start? So in my case, I'm flying from Germany to France. So when I am, when the flight is departing from Germany, it should be 48 hours before that, right? Now coming to France. When I am reaching France, it, the French requirement is 72 hours. So the same RT-PCR test report, which is within 48 hours, is fine that when I'm entering France, it should be the RT-PCR test report negative should be within the 72 hours after that. Good. Next, France to India, right? So at the time of departing, the French airport, this test report should be within 72 hours. Again, fulfilled. And then when landing at India, again, I mean, when you reach India, they will do a compulsory COVID test anyway. 
but at the time of landing in India, the RT-PCR test report should be 72 hours. So again, so this is, you know, the time of entry and the time of exit. That is the only sort of, that is what you should be looking at when you uh, start considering when does the time start and when does the time end. While doing your research to find exactly what rule is applicable for you, I would say do it through the official channel. Go to the website which belongs to the government or official website, right? Don't trust forwarded messages because again, you don't know how long those forwarded messages have been in circulation and whether or not it's even applicable to you at the moment. Do a Google search. First or second search result would be the official website and you'll get all the accurate information as applicable to you. Another thing I want to mention is the food. So it was not good at all. And I understand that in the present situation, uh, it's more important to reach your destination safely than have to have than to have great food on board. But I think even with muted expectations, the standard was still very bad. Uh, I didn't carry it, but I think uh, when you are flying, maybe consider carrying some energy bars, some chocolates, etc., which you could munch just in case the food on your flight was as horrible as it was on mine. So after a long flight, it was finally touched down at Bangalore Airport in India, and as soon as the passengers disembarked, the social distancing took a big hit. But I think it's uh, the passengers and the people themselves need to look into the suspect. Right? more than the officials. As per the latest guidelines issued by the government of India, every person arriving into India has to go a compulsory corona test. And uh, even if you have a connecting flight, a domestic connecting flight, you still need to do this test. The only difference is that no one has to wait for the test result to come out, except if you are coming from UK, Brazil and the South Africa. If you are coming from one of these countries, then you're supposed to wait out till you get the result. Otherwise, you just do the test and you leave. The swab samples are collected from the nose and mouth. And you can either pre-book a test from the airs of the website, or uh, you can just do it on the spot. I did it on the spot. For the payment, both card and cash are accepted. So there are small kiosk uh, counters which are set up. And I have to say that the whole process was really, really, really well organized and was quick. I mean, uh, from I think it took maybe 10 minutes and I was done with the test, also the payment, etc. They do give you a form which you need to fill out, right? So this form will have some of your local address, uh, a local phone. This is important. This is important because your local phone number should be working. So in case you don't have a SIM, you can get a new SIM connection. There's also a provision for that. One of the kiosk counters was set up for that. Or you could give the phone number from the hotel that you're staying or one of the family, friends, etc. who has the number active. The reason is that when you hand over your Corona swap samples, then they link that with a phone number. And it is this phone number and the email address where you get the test report. So the number needs to be active. Once all this is done, then everyone is again screened for their body temperature and the documents are checked again. That is the RT-PCR test, the air suvitha, and uh, again, Aarogya Setu was not checked. The immigration was smooth as well. They asked for the same set of documents. And after that, uh, it was time to collect the luggage and then out. Another thing which I noticed was now at Bangalore airport, there's no need to have a working SIM card to get access to the free Wi-Fi. This is different and this is a very good move. I mean, what is the point of having a free Wi-Fi when you need a mobile number, a local mobile number to access it? This was really ridiculous and I'm glad that they got rid of it. One of the first things which you're gonna do before you start your travel is to book your tickets, right? And this information is applicable to that. If possible, avoid booking a ticket to Mumbai. Mumbai has really strange, weird rules at the moment in terms of the institutional quarantine. And it really, you know, not just this travel, which was my private travel, I also work on ship and I have a lot of colleagues who also work on ships. And all the horror stories which I've heard about people coming via Mumbai and being forced into quarantine and the, it's it's nothing less than a scam and a money-making gimmick. So if you are, for example, a resident and you have to go to Mumbai, then of course you have no option. But at the time of booking your flights, if you see the flight to Mumbai is, let's say, $100 cheaper compared to Kolkata, Delhi, Chennai or something like that, you would be tempted to book that flight to Mumbai, right? And then take a domestic flight from Mumbai. But 
I would say skip the flight to Mumbai and get a get a flight to Bangalore anywhere but Mumbai and then take a domestic even if it costs more because I think in the long run it will actually help you save some money and a lot of harassment really at the moment the way things are moving or the, th the way things are going in, in Mumbai airport the stories which people share and also people who I know firsthand really it is it's a total avoid so if possible avoid going or entering India via Mumbai at the moment yeah that's something I wanted to mention I've tried to cover all the aspects of my travel but if there's still a question that you have you can post it as a comment if you found this video to be informative please give it a like and subscribe to my channel as always thanks for watching keep exploring this is Rahul from Realm and I'll see you in the next one